Hello, everybody. Welcome to Security Center and Shield Event Monitoring Working Together. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Security Center, which gives you a high level view of security posture and alerts you to when those changes, when any changes are made. Um, also, we're going to show you event monitoring where you can investigate any related activity to that security drift in your org. Oh, this wouldn't be a Salesforce conversation without a forward-looking statement. Remember, we're a, a publicly traded company. We want you to make your purchasing decisions based upon products that are already available. Johan and I have a lot of uh, contact with product management, these guys over here. Um, <laughs> so we're really privy to roadmaps. So we're going to call out roadmaps as we move along through the presentation. Did I, did it move? Oh, no, wait. There we go. Uh, for, also, thank you, all of you. Appreciate you so much for coming to Dreamforce and for being customers. Uh, we just couldn't do this without you, so thank you again. Also, don't forget to uh, provide some feedback to win a pass to Dreamforce next year. We're going to show the slide at the end, too. You can catch the QR code when we show it. My name is Doug Cox. I'm a security architect here at Salesforce. I support all HLS, healthcare life science accounts. Um, I'm from New York and I've been with Salesforce for five years. And my name is Johan Kim. I'm also a security architect. I've been at Salesforce eight years. I'm based out of San Francisco, and I support CMT, uh, communications, media tech, and text track accounts. All right. Uh, before we uh, drop into the presentation, I just kind of like go over our security stack really quick. Um, this slide shows our security stack, which is, uh, if you start at the bottom uh, with very viable, secure infrastructure, and uh, multi-tenant platform. Uh, these are things we do for you, right, that you'll never even see. Uh, we have asked testation to back them up for sure. Uh, but you know, just know that we're taking care of your data at the infrastructure level. Now, the built-in layer is super cool. Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. Um, first of all, we've got the Einstein trust layer, which is great. Uh, we're basically going to provide security and privacy uh, two uh, prompts for AI as they pass through the AI uh, system. But we're not going to talk about that today. But I should also mention that we have a uh, security, uh, what's it called now, a trusted AI workshop that we're developing right now. And if you want to uh, be a part of it, just talk to your account team. They can uh, hook you up with that. Now, this core access controls, which is the, the second line up here in the built-in, that's where your security posture resides, okay? This is where your security controls are. This is where your authentication is, your, auth your authorization, your auditing, right? These are the things that you want to understand if they start to drift, right? So we're gonna talk about that in detail. Now on the top line, we have our add-ins, our add-ons, right? And we're gonna zero in on security center and event monitoring. Now, these are extra products that you can buy to reach higher levels of security and compliance. So we're gonna zero in on security center, where we can talk about security drift and, and, and understanding uh, your security posture across all your orgs. And we're going to talk about event monitoring, where we can get a lot of detailed information if the security starts to drift to understand if anything actually occurred. All right. Um, you know, increasing threats put customer data and trust at risk. You know, data, sec data security attacks are way more sophisticated these days. Uh, it's ridiculous what's going on there. And we really need to understand uh, when something's happening as early as possible so we can try to identify if any issues are occurring and possibly remediate them. And, you know, biz businesses also need to get AI ready, right? We need to understand, we need to protect our data, we need to understand what data is being moved into AI, all that. And also, lack of compliance can be costly, right? Uh, HIPAA, GDPR, all that. If you do the wrong thing, you can get fined. So I'm going to talk about Security Center really quick here. Uh, Security Center is a product that we developed at Salesforce to uh, understand security performance. And I talk about security drift, OK? Security drift is you, know, you work very hard to create your security posture, right? I've got 20 modify alls here. I've got 10 here across all my orgs. Now, what happens if that starts to, st starts to drift, right? What if suddenly you wake up, you get a, a notification saying you've got 30 modify halls, right, they've been added. You want to understand why that happened. You want to be able to react to it and investigate it, right? And that really helps secure, uh, reduce security uh, risks and also eliminate potential blind spots 
across your multiple orgs because Security Center is a multiple, a multi-org tool, right? Um, all right. This is a great little slide here. It shows you the architecture. You can look up here. You can see the parent org. This is where you're going to install Security Center. Okay, it's going to be installed on this parent org, and we're going to connect up a bunch of child orgs, whether they be production orgs or sandbox orgs. Um, you can see on the bottom here, on the right-hand side, there's some buttons where you can connect production tenants and sandbox tenants. Very easy. Just log in, and you're off and running. Uh, as soon as you uh, set these up, they'll start reporting into that main org, and you get a nice view of your security posture across all your orgs. Um, security uh, center key use cases are surface and examine unknown threats, right? We want to know what's going on across your, all your orgs. You don't even you need to have a login to it, right? You just be able to log into the main org, right, and be able to understand uh, uh, any drifts or threats that might be occurring. And we want to monitor threat trends over time. We want to see that trend, right? I want to see those modify alls if they're increasing. I want to see user passwords if they're increasing, all those kind of uh, high-level security threats that, that, that indications of potential issues. Um, and also, we want to create alerts, right? I don't want to stare at a screen all day, right? I want to be notified if something's happening in real time or as close to real time as I can get. And I want to track uh, permissions and identify changes. Security Center has um, uh, 60 uh, permissions it can track, tracks uh, configurations. Uh, and we can identify changes by getting notifications and take action where necessary. But you know, really what we're going to talk about today is security drift and then using event monitoring to dig deeper into that data to see if the drift caused any issues. And with that, I'm going to give it to Johan. Thanks, Doug. Salesforce Shield is the name of a bundle of four security products. One of them is event monitoring, which captures a wide range of granular insights on what's happening in your Salesforce org. That includes user access, uh, logins, page and record views. And uh, this is really valuable for security, compliance, and audits. Uh, originally, event monitoring was designed to focus on security use cases, such as who downloaded a report, what rows and columns were in it, um, and who saw what record when. But it's evolved and matured into a product that addresses uh, just more, more than that. So a variety of adoption, performance, and development use cases. And nowhere else can you get these detailed insights from e that the event monitoring logs can provide. In fact, we have partners who interpret, normalize, and visualize and make these logs easier for you to consume downstream and even get more value out of these logs. And when people move, data moves. One of the most popular use cases for event monitoring is understanding the activity from a user who left the company two weeks ago, might have taken something with them. In fact, a lot of the customers that I talk to uh, come to event monitoring uh, and get it, bring, come to bring their attention to focus on what event monitoring can provide after an incident so that next time it happens, they'll have more insight um, regarded, regarding the incident. The specific questions um, sometimes can be about what records were viewed, um, what rows were in it. Um, if in, in uh, adoption use cases have become really uh, more popular in, in, in common time, uh, like recently, and uh, especially like what top 20 apps are viewed or um, what, what, what is the activity, like top entities uh, viewed in your org. And with regard to performance, EPT is the go-to metric, uh, effective page time, which tells you in milliseconds um, how long it took for a page to load. Uh, event monitoring has a couple different features. We have two architectures. The first one is the event log file, which has 57 event types. Um, and then we have real-time event monitoring, uh, which is actually a subset of the 57 event types, about 10 of them. Event log files post in about two hours, and we're working on getting that latency down uh, in the range of under an hour. Uh, and real-time event monitoring events post in real time, and you can subscribe to the stream. Threat detection events, which uh, utilize machine learning and AI, uh, create alerts when there's an anomaly detected, such as when uh, you have historical downloads of, uh, I don't know, 100 rows for a couple previous weeks, and then all of a sudden this week there was 10,000 rows downloaded, it'll generate an alert. And you also have the ability to throttle that threshold so you don't get that alert. Um, and you can, you can get it if it's a false positive, right? Transaction security is arguably the most powerful part of event monitoring, which allows you to take action in real time, such as blocking a report that contains um, a lot of rows, 
or blocking a file download uh, based on some conditions and logic that you can set. Or if you've used data classification, you can, download, you can block a download uh, if a report contains a column that you've labeled confidential. Uh, you, can get, you can block it or let it happen and just get an alert so you know who did it and what was in it. We also have some other tools uh, that are in Pilot, Activity Explorer, which is focused on the user activity, so logs related to the user uh, that happen. So what, what are they downloading? What pages do they view? What API calls are being made? And then Event Explorer, which allows you to select the columns in a log and then kind of drill down on the relevant line items that you want to see to answer a specific ad hoc security question. Uh, we also have Analytics Studio, which allows you to visualize these logs and um, get immediate value because you don't have to configure them. We have these CAN dashboards, the 16 CAN dashboards that come with event monitoring, uh, logins, login as, and then uh, Event Monitoring Plus, which are uh, more granular views of the same logs, um, but uh, show more uh, user adoption use cases and performance use cases. Value Analytics is like Event Monitoring Plus, except requires a CRMA license, a full one, but they're mostly the same. And we'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and show you a demo of what this looks like when you get an alert in Security Center and how I can drill down in event monitoring to better understand a user activity. So let's see. In, in, in the Security Center, I'm going to actually make this a little smaller so we can get all the. We have a couple different metrics authentication by type, configuration metrics, permissions, user metrics. And you can see that actually in the authentication by type, I have a couple of username and passwords logging in without MFA. That's not what I want. I actually want most people coming in through SSO, and I want most people coming in at least through OAuth, something where they're using um, MFA in their flow. Uh, and I can drill down, and it shows me trending. Uh, I see that I've had a couple of them over time, but I really want to just see what happened recently, because that's what the alert was about. And I see that uh, Doug has come in through MFA, without MFA using username and password. And remember, uh, we're looking at multiple orgs across your enterprise. So we can see what org that happened in. And um, in, in this example, this Northern Trail Outfitters, this one is the main org, and these other ones are child orgs. And we even have the raw log data at the bottom. Um, I, we have other metrics, such as permissions, uh, I mean, a, a health check score, and uh, connected apps that show trending over time. And I'm not going to drill down too much in those, but we do show trending, and this is what it looks like. I'm gonna sh I actually have Doug's uh, user ID right here, and I'm going to drill into it to show what that looks like. I do have the total rows exported, transaction security policies triggered, and I can see all of those down here. Um, the, the, the above is like a summary, but I can see that Doug's been downloading row count 1,973, even a, a report that has 45,000 rows in it. The transaction security policy is triggered. He's downloaded some files. We've let it happen and blocked some. And then page views. We can see what previous page he came from, uh, what, what was the name of the app right here, uh, and we have timestamps on the left. Furthermore, um, we have the ability to see what he was doing while he was logged in as another user. Uh, this happens in login, when an admin wants to log in as another user. We can see the rows that he downloaded while he was logged in as Kevin Thompson or Rachel Beard, and um, the IP addresses that he came from. And with that, I'll pass it to Doug to to address one more use case. Thanks, Johan. Appreciate that. That's a great use case. I hear it all the time from our customers. Um, now, here's another interesting one. Um, I get an alert, as you can see on the bottom of the screen here, uh, that my view all data permissions have increased. And this kind of freaks me out, because I did not plan on this happening. So I want to investigate it. And it really begs the question, you know, who assigned this permission, right? Uh, which records did anyone view with this permission? And what does a user activity, uh, a user's activity look like? So I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm 60, what can I say? All right. <laughs> so if I go down to modify, uh, I'm sorry, view all data within Security Center, again, we've tracked 60 permissions here, so it's pretty amazing. Um, I can immediately see. Uh, 
a big spike. I mean, a really big spike. You know, we went we went up to 600. Um, and and as I start to look into this a little bit more, I can start to see that this really crazy thing happened. <laughs> I don't I don't know why, but apparently a lot of user profiles were changed. Uh, we added a uh, 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 view all to a, a JIT base user profile. And you know, if you're using user profiles. That's awesome, but we kind of like you to put them down into permission sets. We can be a little bit more meet least privilege, right, and have multiple permission sets underneath, uh, 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 you know, uh, job tasks or whatever, right, so we can uh, really drive the least privilege. But, you know, I noticed my name, Doug Cox, is in this mix, right? So I'm going to um, underst I got first thing I understand is who made this permission change, right? Uh, so I can use the setup auto trail. Now this data is actually available within our CRM app as well, but I'm just going to use setup auto trail here, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to see. Oh yeah, view all data was given by this guy, Johan Kim. Don't do that, okay? It's my job. <laughs> all right. Now, um, one more. Um, so I can use analytics to kind of poke around and see what's going on here. And I'm going to use Event Monitoring Plus. And I'm going to look at the user journey. And this, this is my favorite right here. This res really resonates with my customers when I show it. Um, so I'm going to drill down. First of all, I'm going to drill down to my name, Doug, right? so I can just see my user journey. Um, gives us a lot of information. Uh, but you know some of the main information that we're looking at here is top 20 apps used. Sure enough, you know Security Hub, uh, event monitoring, you know uh, all kinds of places I'm looking at. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, user inter object interactions. I've been interacting a lot with contacts. Um, I've been uh, you know accounts, uh, top 20 pages, clicks, all of that. But also we have the ability to uh, view the user journey, which I love. Uh, being able to see a complete journey through the system from log on to log off, you know, what, what am I using, what am I looking at, all of that. And by looking at that, all this information, I'm pretty confident that Doug, me, <laughs> hasn't really done anything out of the ordinary when it comes to viewing data. So I'm pretty confident with that. Don't you think, Johan? It's pretty good. Yeah. All right. That's a good investigation. That's a good investigation. All right. So security center and event monitoring, uh, you know, really help you identify, investigate security drift, right? Security center is uncovers these high level security health, right? Um, uh, security posture, right? And when it changes, you want to be notified. Uh, event monitoring allows you to remediate, or not remediate, but identify any change, anything that might have been done with those changes. Got to modify all. Did I update anything? Did I change anything? Etc. So, you know, security center and event monitoring work pretty well together to be able to identify issues that might have been caused by changing security settings. Change the <laughs> you can scan this QR code. Um, get some uh, uh, link to the trailheads for security center. They're awesome. Please take them. Uh, Give me a second to do that. Thanks, Johan. Also, uh, call to action slide. Learn event monitoring. These are great trailheads. Uh, the enhanced security, enhanced uh, transaction security trailhead is awesome. Get a little playground, be able to test it out, try it out. Uh, and event monitoring analytics apps is great as well. And um, we also offer, reach out to your account rep to talk about Defend Security Workshops, which gives you an overview of all of our security products. Uh, we even uh, deep dive into the demos and the use cases. We even offer a AI. An AI, a trusted AI workshop. workshop. And it's to learn more. Hot off the presses. So with that, I want to thank you for coming to this session. Johan and I are very appreciative. And um, have a great dream for us. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comments section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.